My guest today is Dr. Nicole Turner Lee. Nicole is a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. She is also the director of their Center for Technology Innovation. And I'm going to ask her what she thinks the future of technology and work might look like in a post COVID world. What it looks like in terms of digital is that we are now facing the new normal. This transactional capacity in which we've actually engaged new technology whether it's you know shopping or it's watching movies or now it's learning, working, healthcare, I can keep going, is actually gonna change the nature of how we actually look at the future. And I think this transactional capacity of technology is going to become, think, become something much more ingrained in our daily task and activities. But the future of technology also looks like uh, a period of where we'll see disparities emerge among those who are connected and those who are not. Being disconnected in the world of COVID was bad. Being disconnected after the world of COVID will be worse. Is technology the new savior or might it also be a threat? If you go back historically, technology was a medium to help us solve and correct certain social problems. Many of the technologies that have been sort of evolving to this date are all about creating seamless and efficient systems for humans to basically engage. And now with the rise of automation and robots and artificial intelligence, the technology is getting even smarter than humans to the point that we cannot keep up with that level of innovation on the policy side. But the curse in the technology is that if it's not inclusive, representative, if it's not equally diffused or available, and it becomes pretty much the transformative nature for how we conduct daily business, for those people who are not connected, whether they are rural, whether they are people of color, lower income, less education, older, disabled, they will be left behind. And we run the risk of creating another America, another world, actually, where people who do not have access to technology cannot engage in what has become the new public domain and town square. Technology clearly helped us stay connected in these times of COVID. What about the future? You know, technology serves its purpose during COVID. The mandate of social distancing required us not to be in the same spaces. And so if we were connected, we were able to work at home. We were able to get extended health care without risking uh, the virus within a distressed hospital system or potentially a uh, volatile uh, space within your doctor's office. By the same token, you look at equity and you look at 53 million kids that were sent home from school, of which 18 uh, million of them, you know, some would suggest, did not have broadband access. About 9 million students didn't have broadband or a device. We may be working from home and using these video conferencing capabilities to be able to run these meetings, but we are taking a toll on the real estate market who has been dependent upon businesses to pay some type of commercial rent. Where sacrificing the workers that may have provided mailroom or security or cafeteria services within our building. I think as we look forward to what the world looks like post COVID, it definitely is not going to look like what it looked like before COVID. <laughs> we are going to see a shift in ways that we have seen sacrificial lambs in terms of our businesses, that we have had to reimagine what education looks like, that we've even had to consider the extent to which we sacrifice the going into a physical place for work and honestly, the mental health of employees that no longer have the distinction between being on and off from work. So I think going forward, technology is definitely going to be a game changer. What would you want leaders to do to help prepare us for this brave new world? You know, I think it's important for global leaders to embrace technologies in ways that help us to innovate uh, historic and traditional systems, you know, help us do the things that we used to do even better. But I also think it's about time that our global leaders think about the, the forward long game of technology, the implications on economic factors, the implications on work, not just the number of people who might be displaced, but also the future of what that work looks like the implications of the training and skills that are gonna be needed to actually innovate in these new positions. If we don't think about stuff like that in terms of our global leadership, the type of cooperation and collaboration that may be necessary 
to build systems that are resilient and safe, as well as agile enough to change. Uh, maybe go back to the old ways when it's not doing too well, and maybe look towards the future when we think we're on to something. Technology, in many respects, doesn't lead us. It doesn't dictate who we are supposed to be as a society. It doesn't place these like surreal norms on our behaviors just because it's here. <laughs> in many respects, we often forget that we as human beings, we create, we develop, and we diffuse those technologies. And I hope going forward that we look at technology not just as this um, seventh on the list, you know, surreal shiny object, <laughs> uh, something that we do now that the kids do better than the adults, but we look at technology in terms of what does the age of being connected mean? 2020 was the year that being connected mattered. 